On April 26th, my dad turned 95 years old. Of course, we had a big birthday celebration. Everybody was there. Even two of the grand dogs came. My mom made a cake, a chocolate sheet cake, complete with candles. We didn't have 95 candles, though, because she said she didn't want to burn down the house. We sang happy birthday. We talked. We laughed for almost an hour. It was a perfect celebration, except for one thing. We did the whole thing by Zoom. And as much as I appreciate the technology that allows us to be together in these strange times, I really missed being present. I missed sitting at the table sharing a meal. I really missed eating that chocolate cake. I missed greeting my family with hugs, and I especially missed hugging my dad on that very special day. And my guess is this afternoon, several of you are going to have very similar feelings as you gather virtually to celebrate Mother's Day. These are strange times. It's hard not to be together. And yet we work at it. We find creative digital ways to see one another because it's important to be connected with family and with friends who are like family. And that's true in the church also, isn't it? So many of you have said how much you appreciate the online worship services and how much you love seeing the faces of your pastors and the worship leaders. And I know every time I do a meeting with a small group or uh, a committee by Zoom, inevitably one of the first things that I hear as soon as everybody's picture pops up, someone says, it is so good to see your faces. And it is good because we miss each other. We miss gathering around the table for Wednesday night supper. And we miss gathering around the altar for Holy Communion. We long for the day that we can join our voices together in song and stand side by side as we serve in mission and ministry. It's hard being apart. And yet we press on and find creative ways to do church because we know the truth that no amount of distance can change our connection to one another because in the church, we are family. This isn't a new concept, being family in the church. It goes all the way back to Jesus. And in fact, the story that went and read for us talks about Jesus naming this reality. Jesus is talking to the crowds, and his mother and brothers come. They want to see him and speak to him. Now, we don't know what they wanted or what they wanted to say. The scripture doesn't tell us that. And the gospel writer is not concerned about that information. The gospel wants us to focus on Jesus' response. Jesus says, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And then he points to the disciples and says, These are my mother and brothers. He's not being mean to Mary. He's not discounting the relationship that the two of them share. He's naming the new spiritual reality that exists in the kingdom of God he's come to proclaim. And that reality is that those who follow Jesus are his family. Jesus said that those who do God's will, and notice the the emphasis on action there, those who do God's will are the brothers and sisters of Christ and therefore brothers and sisters of each other. That was very important in the early church. For many people in the early days of the church, when they professed faith in Christ, Their family rejected them. And so the church became their family and their support system. We know a little bit about that, don't we? Even those of us who have wonderful families find love and support and belonging at church. I see it in our young families. I love to watch the Go Forth class. Those people know how to support each other. And I love to watch how they parent each other's kids. 
And for our families who don't have uh, extended family around locally, the church becomes their extended family. It's true for our older adults. As I've been calling and checking in with older adults who are living alone, over and over they tell me beautiful stories of how you are calling and sending cards and bringing groceries for them. And even before anybody had ever heard of COVID-19, people tell me often, I don't know how I would have done this without my church family. When cancer hits, when a loved one dies, when life gets hard, it is the prayer and love and support of the church family that often helps us get through this. In the church, we are family. When I was eight years old, I had the opportunity to attend my parents' wedding. I remember that day so clearly. I I felt so grown up in my blue velvet dress, my brand new black patent leather shoes, and my white gloves. On that day, my dad made vows to the woman that would become his wife and our mama. And we had the chance to make vows to her as well. It was a beautiful ceremony. It was far from perfect, though. About halfway through the ceremony, my two-year-old sister escaped from the pew and ran up and grabbed my dad's leg. And afterwards, when the photographer was trying to get those perfect pictures, there were children running around in the choir loft. I might have been the instigator of that. And those children Running in the choir loft is captured in the wedding pictures, my transgression captured forever. But when it was all said and done, when we walked out of that church, we were family. And we got into our VW bus, decorated to the hilt with just married signs. And I would love to have seen the faces of people who watched us drive by, just married across the back, and a van with a mom and dad and four children looking out the window. Every time I think of that story, I think about what happens when we as a church gather around the altar and around the baptismal font. As a person makes vows for themselves or on behalf of their children, vowing to follow Christ and serve him, And as we as a congregation make promises to love and nurture that person. And in the waters of baptism, we become family. My friends, I don't know exactly how long we're going to have to do this virtual church. I miss being with you. And I know you miss being with each other, but it looks like it's going to be several more weeks. But here's where I take heart in that. Even though we're apart, we're still working. We're still worshiping. We're learning together, studying the scripture. We're serving, using our connections as the family of God to meet the needs of people in our community and beyond. We are being the church. We are being family, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we do it because we know, we know that no amount of social distancing can ever change the reality that Jesus spoke in the scripture that we read today, the reality that in Christ We are brothers and sisters connected by the Holy Spirit. We are family. So keep being creative. Look for ways to connect and love and support and serve. Trust in that reality that we are the family of God. And together we will get through this and we will be faithful.